Awesome. Thank you, Mehdi, and uh, good evening from the UK. Uh, my name is Claire Barrett, and I make strategy happen. API enabled change calls for making a lot of small and some large decisions along the way. And I'm going to speak for the next 20 minutes or so about managing key trade offs at large and medium complexity organizations that face individuals, the IP, API teams, and their stakeholders. Um, and we'll be talking about how to reach a level of API maturity as being like supporting the organization's broader transformation of a community moving into, if you like, new and unfamiliar territories and lands that call for new skills and capabilities and have a number of key decisions along the way. Um, those trade-offs uh, can be described as being seen through the eyes of, if you like, uh, a, a physicians, um, the, the, me the medics for the community, um, the people who are going to help uh, work out what are some of the short-term pain relievers uh, that might need to be applied to help people along the way, and what are some of the uh, more extensive elite athlete regimes that are going to um, uh, build strength at all levels in the organization. So how does the community get fitter and healthier as a whole to create an environment in which APIs will be successful and they'll be able to adapt? The research I've been doing uh, is with uh, seasoned um, IT and change professionals. So you could think of them perhaps as the, the, the medical board, the group of um, uh, uh, experienced people who have been driving change in large complex organizations and they would measure their experience in uh, decades more than in years. And uh, through in-depth interviews with them, I've been uh, sensing and, and uh, establishing what are some of the trade-offs they make and where would they put their efforts at key points during their maturity. Um, we're going to look at uh, that maturity place as, across three stages for APIs. So getting to pilot, which is a little bit like um, uh, reaching the first mountain uh, in this uh, um, long uh, transformational move to a, to a new world, um, reaching that first mountain, seeing the view from the top and uh, opening up opportunities more broadly for new APIs moving beyond uh, pilots into um, then having uh, parts of the community moving into these new uh, richer sources of, of um, before they actually look to scale out beyond the enterprise. And through that process, uh, are going to get perhaps uncomfortable, but also then comfortable in the, the new environment in which they're working. At the outset, on the first stage of um, work, the, uh, you're looking to ask the question about which APIs are you going to build first? Uh, and you're also going to be seeking guidance on uh, or looking to find out how much executive support and how much big uh, directional change you're going to need to move the, the environment and the behavior into somewhere that APIs are going to be successful. Um, early on, this is a little bit like presenting with chronic back pain. Uh, you, you really need to get some pain relief to reduce the inflammation before you can have a sensible conversation with people about maybe some lifestyle changes like taking half an hour's exercise every day or um, getting more sleep. Um, for, from the research that I did with large organizations, people said that they would put more than half of their effort, about 60% on average, and three quarters of that effort in, in lower complexity organizations into solving uh, problems that are being experienced by customers and employees today. So finding APIs that perhaps are not going to be the, the, the really big game changers in time, but the things that are going to get pain out of the system that are going to make a process faster, more efficient, and will um, start creating a story that will resonate uh, broadly with people. Um, interestingly, in more higher complex organizations, uh, guidance was as you embark on change of this, uh, this nature, that you um, are also going to need to balance off and put effort into getting some um, broader uh, symbols of change behind things. So by that, we mean um, uh, working with your stakeholders to uh, uh, get them to back 
uh, perhaps some you know key minimum standards, uh, um, security expectations for every type of API that might not be uh, needed, seem to be needed in the early days, but that will build the good foundations, um, build the good behaviors for longer term change. So as you move beyond that first, um, scaled the first mountain, and now um, other teams are getting on board and looking to uh, develop APIs that can propagate uh, um, and uh, reimagine customer experiences, can start getting efficiencies into um, uh, reaching into new markets. Uh, you've got um, another trade-off to be thinking about, about how to get your messages resonating with the communities that are going to help um, spread the word more broadly. So uh, this is about how to get heard in the crowd and how to sustain commitment for ongoing investment. Um, uh, what I heard in the research was that people are going to expect to have their story told. Um, uh, it will be more effective to put their efforts into um, messaging that will resonate with customers and employees close to the cold face of activity. And they put twice their effort into that from um, seeking ongoing um, uh, visibility to stakeholders such as investors, regulators, external um, uh, entities. So that um, balance will is, is kind of like um, uh, focusing on each API, getting traction and leverage and, and being ampl amplifying success, but then spending some effort on asking for maybe uh, some of the big um, lifestyle training facilities uh, that, that you need. So uh, this could be API lifecycle management, uh, technology support, uh, tooling, skills, um, training, getting visibility and access. As you're getting beyond pilot, you'll also be absorbing and building new habits and um, skills to be able to survive in this, uh, survive and thrive in this new world. Um, the sorts of API behaviors that you can be looking to recruit and um, upskill and reward people for being involved in are going to be around disciplined engineering, um, establishing data-driven process design, incentivizing people to operate beyond their usual boundaries and uh, building cultures as well that will support processes, not just the technologies. Um, so you'll also be looking at new ways of going about the change. And you've got a, 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 um, a as you get good at delivering IT enabled change, which APIs are, are enabling you to do, you're going to be looking to get much shorter increments of, of change out. And when I asked stakeholders, um, uh, the research participants about whether they would put more effort into uh, getting really good at experimentation, failing fast, or whether they would prefer to take um, time box iterations of planned progress uh, as ways of achieving this faster execution. Um, in large, high complexity organizations, people uh, looked to put twice of their effort into building skills at actually being really good at experimentation and failing fast. Uh, in lower complexity organizations, people were more comfortable with building um, iterations of, of plan change that they would be able to justify at each step. But in an API, in large organizations, you'd be looking for experimentation in both API coverage, in API um, uh, usage, in uh, developer experiences, in toolings, each, each iteration of a cycle of change is going to be broaden out coverage as well as capability. As you start uh, um, moving um, 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 much more of a migration of your, your, your overall organization to this uh, newer ways of working, um, you will be calling on uh, significant diversity and, and breadth of uh, experience in, in the people that are going to make API successful for you. Um, they effectively represent the diversity of your own business. You're going to need people who deeply understand uh, the business operational activities that are being uh, automated and replaced, people that are going to be able to um, apply commercial acumen to APIs as products uh, to um, uh, identify, spot um, and work on the things that are going to make a real difference and be able to pick out uh, 
potentially weak signals in the, the volumes of data uh, that are being um, uh, now managed and seen and processed by your API capability. With your growing success of APIs as your portfolio broadens, you will also expect to see a growth in the demand for your uh, time, effort and support in, in um, making that uh, available to people. So if it felt like you were early on um, kind of at a market stall uh, shouting for um, uh, people to come and um, uh, listen to your story and hear the successes, now it may feel more like that there's everybody crowding at your stall and they're queued out behind this, you know, around the street um, in order to be able to get access to your time, your expertise and your uh, tooling, your experience. So um, you need to be uh, thinking about your role in the uh, community of actors that make APIs successful in your organization. And uh, you may have more than one of these roles, but we typically uh, see that people are either the elders sponsoring the change, um, they're uh, the explorers uh, taking, um, uh, looking for API opportunities on, on new, new mountains, uh, um, and or they are um, uh, providing broader roadmaps for the uh, technology expectations and so on, the navigators. Uh, we give some examples here of the types of things that could be important to any of those groups at a point in time in an organization. And the, uh, the, 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 the balance and the, the, the sweet spot that you need to find is in the intersection between these capabilities. Uh, there is always a, uh, a limit on how much um, uh, people can invest and, and support in how many of these things at any one point in time. And this is where uh, there's going to be less focus on pain relief and more on uh, long-term lifestyle changes uh, around uh, API engineering disciplines, around um, uh, uh, propagating an API mindset across uh, many, uh, many more levels of the organization in order for it to realize the, the full potential. So seeing where you can make the most impact and uh, I think also carrying on from the, from the previous presentation, measuring and, uh, um, and tracking your progress uh, ultimately is, is absolutely critical. Ultimately, your API change is, is changing something. Uh, the challenge for, for many is what is it actually changing that is not also being changed uh, by um, or influenced by many other things that are going on in the organization's broader uh, change and transformation. Uh, so when I asked um, in my research about whether people would in um, uh, would put uh, would invest in uh, demonstrating the impact of their IT change on uh, today's known business performance measures, um, you know, revenues, efficiencies, etc., or whether they would put their efforts into uh, setting um, new bars uh, and then meeting those bars and potentially changing those measures along the way. What I heard from them was that they would put about 55% um, uh, of their effort uh, and 60% at higher complexity organizations into uh, continuously building and improving on the measurement systems that they were using to show their API uh, success. So uh, measuring the number of APIs at an early uh, pilot stage um, uh, is uh, maybe useful, but it is certainly not over time. You're going to be wanting to look uh, at more mature uh, and uh, growing uh, measures that will show how you are making this continuous improvement and your experimentation process is likely to be uh, brought to life through this um, and or your iterative change as you go. So if you're uh, involved in, in managing change and you're putting less than half of your effort into bar raising and, and more into bar setting, then, then you're in good company. So API maturity involves trade-offs regardless of where you are in the journey and recognizing their contribution to your organization's broader success is going to be key to supporting and enabling that greater digital transformation. Uh, to be balanced and pragmatic with your responses, uh, you need to get the right messaging, 
you need to focus on the right measures that are going to be right at the right point in time. And you need to uh, build around you capability with the right diversity to be successful. Uh, so in summary, pain relief can give you space, but it's really the lifestyle changes that pay off in the long term and that will build your health and resilience to thrive and adapt to the change that is around you. Uh, now, we do have some time for questions or I'm happy to um, uh, happy to go back um, if anybody wanted to follow up on particular slides. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you, Claire. So it relates also there. We have a, one question about like a, how to onboard the business people, you know, about the three circle bubbles you present, uh, you know, from the, the sponsors, the technology. Mm -hmm. and the, uh, uh, yeah, so if you can go back on that slide and maybe. Uh, sure. Uh, on her, yeah. How how do you how do each one convince each other uh, into how onboarding the API program? Yeah. So the question is how do, how do, how do they influence each other? So um, the the elders are going to be influencing the transformers. With um, they're going to be expecting them to uh, push the boundary for finding new and more adventurous um, opportunities for APIs, but the explorers are going to be working to influence the sponsors. Um, and, and typically the explorers, they, they, they may live in functions like, um, they may be called the digital transformation team, the innovators. Um, their opportunity is to um, uh, bring great ideas to the sponsors and really in, um, uh, and interpret those, but the spot, but it, and explain what things like an ecosystem play, what an API capability actually will do for the organization strategically and explain that this is not a, just a tech thing or an IT thing. Transformers can influence technologists with the, um, uh, the types of opportunities, but they're going to be collaborating really closely on each other's skills. The technologists are going to be providing the uh, developer portals experiences, the, um, the, the right light touch uh, governments, the, the empowerment and capability they're going to be looking at tooling. And technologists and the IT leaders are going to be influencing the elders community with how uh, um, IT investment in a uh, simpler and more agile architecture is going to ultimately realize the adaptability from the business change. But all three of them come together around APIs as almost like the front door into uh, the, the transformation will change more broadly. Yeah, one question about the the last the bar the bar setting versus the uh, the new metrics. Uh, how do you evolve from let's say poor metrics to more advanced metrics? Uh, you know, on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this has to be very much a test and learn, and it's also going to be about getting um, the right people in the team that will help because the the metrics will be very personal to the organization, uh, particularly as you get more mature with them. Um, they are going to um, align, but it's it's about not measuring a lot of people that I spoke to in the survey called out that, that they measure too, that we measure too much in many organizations. Um, we measure things that have a moving baseline that actually kind of can be presented in ways to almost a kind of counter whatever the argument is, we can go and find the data to present it. Um, to actually engineer and instrument for measures is really important. So we we want to measure fewer things and we want to ensure that we've got the instrumentation for those to be um, uh, automatically created um, and not be uh, and, and people being educated on how to use them. And that that uh, that gets um, evolves with each experiment effectively with each step. So you've worked in, uh, in some CIO offices of uh, some large banks. Uh, how do you translate these metrics to a CIO? Um, so uh, I think the, the broader question is um, uh, how do you support your technology colleagues and your business colleagues in finding measurement systems that they both align and agree on? So, um, uh, uh, and, and APIs are a great example of a technical capability and a uh, business process and uh, realization that um, uh, it can be quite visible and quite an easy way of actually um, brokering the conversation between those those people, because a simpler um, and more 
um, uh, able to change architecture will deliver the type of will will start answering a lot of the frustrations that um, uh, elders and transformers may see with um, the pace at which um, uh, IT enabled change is able to be made. So one question about diversity: how, how diverse should be the team involved in APIs in an organization? Uh, it, it it should be um, uh, a, 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 it should definitely be diverse in terms of um, both skills, experience, um, uh, background, uh, because thinking differently about APIs almost requires you kind of turn traditional thinking on its head, and uh, to get a kind of inside out approach, you need a you need a very broad. Um, uh, group um, representing different ages, different um, uh, cultures, backgrounds, because they'll come with different types of thinking, and uh, they that that is also reflected in their experience. So you don't want uh, the, the, it's not it's like don't find necessarily the usual suspects to solve the, solve these types of problems. Um, uh, find in the organisation perhaps um, uh, some um, uh, some people who can bring a really fresh fresh perspective. Yeah. So uh, to know more about your research, uh, how we can how we can contribute or how we can reach you. Yeah. So um, I would love if anybody can reach me on LinkedIn. Um, uh, we're also um, at a booth um, uh, during the breaks. So uh, during the breaks, during the US track and the European track. Um, so do uh, look uh, look me up at the expo um, and Medi, and uh, um, I look forward to uh, hearing from any of you. Um, and I'll be around in and out during the conference. So. Thank you all very much.